Jesus come through his lineage? Do you get what I'm saying? David, just, you must have just, why are you doing this? You know, he would just have lived his life like a normal guy. But it was a plan. 2,000 years ago, God was planning, 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 planning. Made Samuel be born. Samuel was born after, made, it was a plan. It was all a plan. It was all his, his grand scheme. <laughs> it was all a plan. I'm telling you the truth. It was all a plan. That one young girl will be born to him a family and then the girl will be going and then one day angel will come hey hey we are going to use your womb are you going to agree and then they will let it say beat unto me according to your word it was all a plan that one day one strange thing came upon one man that was bearded with a stick his name was called isaiah and he came to the public and said the public a virgin shall give her to a child virgin they should stone him to death you are dishonoring virginity it was all a plan it was all a plan. Do you know that God's plan has not expired? Ha! It is still part of the plan that you succeed. It is for a reason. Listen to what I'm telling you, sir. It is for a re you, you, you need to start to flow with God's plan like a river. Imagine if Isaiah never prophesied it. If it happened, it was not in the scripture. But one man, under the tipsy feeling of some whatever feeling, came to a woman and a virgin shall conceive. And she shall give a virgin conceive. Imagine hearing that now. Virgin, virgin, that fire that virgin. How do you explain to me your virgin call? Virginity. But it was part of God's plan. Where are you in God's plan? Are you part of God's remedy plan? Is it possible God has a mind to use you for your family and you just don't know it? Is it possible that the conversations we are going to hear tonight is supposed to line you up with God's plan again? That's why I was very refreshed by that brief charge. Were you blessed by that brief charge there? Let's give him a round of applause and appreciate it, um, Dr. Bayo. May they not clap for you like that. Let's give him a round of applause and appreciate him better said be plugged be plugged it's a plan it's look at this place now look at this place that they are building you know what i'm saying it's a plan there is a plan there is a plan oh there is a plan look at they've cleared a lot of properties there to go under that bridge because those things were not part of the plan oh, yeah. the grand plan will soon overtake anything that is standing your way there's a grand plan Anything not part of God's plan, God will cancel it tonight. Amen. Say that amen like though you believe your amen. amen. So I want to welcome you specially to the month of March. Where you will march into God's plan in Jesus' name. Amen. May the plan of God be convenient for you. Amen. May you find it easy to cooperate with him. Amen. <laughs> it's all a plan. Do you know it was part of a plan that God ordained that people will shout... Crucify him. Crucify him. It was a plan. The Bible says if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. It was a plan. They could have just said, poison him. Let him die. No. It was a plan he must die on a tree. It was a plan he should suffer. Let me prove it to you before I teach you tonight. Come with me to Luke chapter 24. Because someone is looking at me and saying, Pastor, I'm getting you, sir. But where is this in the Bible? Let me show you. You know, we don't talk without scriptures here. Luke chapter 24. I taught this thing first when I was a campus pastor many years ago. <laughs> Look at his story from verse 20. Let's start from... Um, 13. This month is our month of what? Motions and movements of the Holy Ghost. We will talk about it. You are going to enjoy it. Look at it. Luke 24 from verse 13. People of God, let's enjoy this together. Can we read? One, two, go. And behold, two of them 
went that same let's read now come on let's do this let's do this one to go and behold two of them went that same day to a village called emmaus which was from jerusalem about three score furlongs and they talked together of all these things which had happened and it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned jesus himself drew near and went with them but their eyes were holding that they should not know him he says their eyes were may your eyes not be held back Amen. i said may your eyes not be held back Amen. you will know jesus in the name of jesus christ he said but their eyes were holding that they should not know him verse 17 and he said unto them what manner let's read now don't leave me alone one to go verse 17 and he said unto them what manner of communication are these that ye have one to another as you walk and are sad he was concerned why should you be sad why should you guys be unhappy what is going on these two gentle fine men walking on the street of emmaus or to emmaus look how this says verse 18 let's read one to go everybody 18 one to go and one of them whose name was cleopas answering said unto him art thou only a stranger in jerusalem you're asking jesus imagine and has not known the things which have come to pass there in these days verse 19 one to go and he said unto them what things see how just is playing 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 along with them like you know what i'm saying wait it say happen wait till i talk say what things this is jesus done then i do it somebody say pastor used to play prank uh -uh. jesus was playing what here did he not know what they were saying <laughs> he said what is not jesus our jesus hey, what things and hey, what do you people say is going on let's read on when verse 19 one thing one to go and he said unto them what things and they said unto him concerning jesus of nazareth which was a prophet mighty indeed and word before god and all the people what a joy that's the kind of testimony i desire and then he says and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him ah see they were feeling for him and they crucified him verse 21 hear this so please look at this story i want to read it from 13 for a reason you know. first verse 21 where's one to go but we trusted that it had been he, he which should have redeemed israel and beside all this today is the third day since these things were done yea and certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulchre and when they found not his body they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels are you there tonight which said he was alive verse 24 one to go and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said but him they saw not then he said unto them this is somebody that does not know them before oh fools imagine me calling you fools now you is a pastor uh, don't call me a fool sir <laughs> jesus said oh fools <laughs> and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken are you slow of heart to believe what the prophets is saying that's what qualifies us to be a fool i'm not gonna said it though if you are slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have, have said uh, 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 there's a name for you slow of, he did not say they will not believe oh, they are slow to believe hey don't get irritated it's not me that said it look at it luke 24 verse 25 deal with your bible if you are slow of heart to believe <laughs> there's a name for you <laughs> seven seven thousand how now continue slow of heart to believe look at the next thing look at the next thing that next thing trips me more see what it says ought not christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory is it possible you are suffering something that you ought to suffer now and you are misbehaving before entering into your glory jesus christ suffered these things the word of god says ought not christ that means it is proper that christ should suffer these things please who was talking jesus <laughs> Ought not Jasper to go through these things to enter into his glory? Ought 
not Fumi Lola, Pastor Fumi, to suffer these things to enter into her glory? Ought not Michael to suffer these things? Ought, he says ought. That means it is, that is what it ought to be. You know when you say ought, it's the, it's the proper thing. To suffer these things, then to enter into his glory. Ought not put your name to suffer what you are suffering to enter into your glory. There is a glory for you, sir. There is a glory for you. And there are some things you ought to suffer. <laughs> this was Jesus who he said, ought not Christ, not somebody else, Christ to have suffered these things and then to enter into his glory. Verse 27. And then I'll stop there. And beginning, look at this, this is where I'm going to. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Starting from Moses, Deuteronomy. He showed them himself in Deuteronomy. I was the rock that was beside you. I was the fire that was there. I was the water that came from the rock. I was the snake on, upon the rod. I was the manna that you ate in the wilderness. I was the bread of life. I was that. I was this. I was the rod of Jesse. I am the everlasting. I am this. Showing them it was all a script. All a script. All a script. And even tonight is a script. <laughs> It's a script. When you see that God has finished the works from the foundations of the earth, you will understand there's nothing you are doing that you are creating. You are only acting out the script. You can wrongly cast a script. Does not mean that the script is wrong. You are the one that interpreted it wrongly. That's why it's called scriptures. Script. Scriptures. Scriptures. Scriptures scriptures scripted you can't change what is written it cannot be broken it's a desire that you play the script wrongly does not mean the script has changed it's your script may you find your script may you fulfill your script may you be fulfilled in your script may the script writer director say you are good for your script in the name of Jesus Christ it's all a script it's called scripture. I'm not the one. There's something I said. I'm only showing you what is written. I was born into it. But when your eyes see it, you will know it's a script, script, scripture, scripture. <laughs> what part of the script are you fulfilling? Some of you by now you are supposed to be teaching the gospel. You are somewhere eating <laughs> and, and palm wine. <laughs> not even better drink. I saw palm wine. Do you know the combination? <laughs> my laughter you know i pity you see listen let me tell you people of god tonight god will show you your script there was a script written about you it's you i don't want to say oh lord show me my life it is written it is written it is written if it was written for jesus it is written for you <laughs> I won't allow you in your new mind. Baba Motu, where would you call me? I won't allow you in your new mind. Amy, I like you in your new mind. Amy, I like you in your new mind. Baba Motu, where would you call me? <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> you are the mighty God. How excellent is your name! You are the mighty God. How excellent is your name! You are the good.
We bless you, Lord Jesus. We glorify your name. Plug us into your will, oh God. We will do your will. Plug us to your will, oh Lord. Let me show you one more scripture before I open my teaching tonight. By the way, I hope you don't have questions from last month. If you do, my plan is to make sure that social capital is ended. Amen. But I want the conversation to just start. Let me show you one more scripture then we teach tonight. But I hope you are blessed by this brief church. Um, I'm tempted most times to want to start in a hurry. But I, I like to be sensitive to the movement of God's spirit. There's something called the motions and the spirit of God. The motions and the movement of the spirit of God. Let me show you something before we go into the scriptures tonight. Romans chapter 1, verse 11. Um, actually, I'm going to read verse 13. Is it? Who works all things according to the order of his will? Look how it says in verse um, verse chapter one. I mean Romans chapter one. Ah, where is my scripture? I thought it disappeared. Got him looking like. Please, one second. Ah. Who works all things? Oh, one second. It should be Ephesians 1, verse 11. Yeah, it's Ephesians. Sorry, not Romans. I'm sorry. Chapter 1, verse 11, please. I'm sorry about that. Ephesians, please. Sorry about that. Romans 2 is a good one, but that's not what I'm looking for. Ephesians 1, verse 11. In whom also we obtained an inheritance, being predestinated. Someone say predestinated. predestinated. Do you know what it means to be predestinated? Let's understand that word. What does it mean to be predestinated? Destinated. Predestinated. Destinated. Predestinated. So there's destiny. But they say there's predestiny. Please, do you understand what I'm saying? To be destined means to be appointed. There's predestinated. Even before you were appointed. Are you getting what I'm saying here? So destiny started when you knew yourself. But before you knew yourself, there was a predetermination about what your life should look like. It says there... In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Somebody say, I have an inheritance. inheritance. Being predestinated according. Let's read it together. Please, everybody, please, please, please. I want to start teaching now and I want us to do it together. Let's read it together one more time. Verse 11. Everybody, one, two, go. One, two, go. Let me call up Amplify Classic so that I can read after now. One, two, go. Everybody, KJV, one, two, go. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who walketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Or that, that school you went to, God is going to walk it after the counsel of his will. That woman you married, he's going to turn it together after the counsel of his own will. Nevertheless, only the counsel of the Lord shall stand. Let me tell you, no matter what you do, the moment you say, Father, take the will, he makes everything work together after the counsel of his will. You marry the strange woman, don't worry. He will turn it together to fit into his will. 
That means everything is about his will. Thy will be done on earth as it is where? Done in heaven. It is his will. Praise the Lord. Do you know that one of the things that will give us stress, I've said this again and again, the Bible says not all that say to me, Lord, 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 will enter into the kingdom. You remember that scripture? Matthew 7, 21. Please keep Amplified Classic close by of that same scripture. It says, but them that what? Do it the will of my father. The will of my father. Hey, are you there at all? Yes, sir. Matthew 7, 21. It says, not all that say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of God. Can we look at it? I'm deliberately trying to do this preamble because I don't want to dive too deep into tonight. And then I will get there. Look at it. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Did you see that in your Bible? But what? Who are those that will enter the kingdom of heaven? Do, that doeth the will of my father. Which so, sir, are you doing the will of God? Sometimes you'll be thinking that those things are for false prophets. All these pastor that used to just shout. All these fake people. You that you are shouting, are you doing the will of God? It's not for false prophets. It's those that do the will of God. Your current position, God says you should be music director. You are saying, no, Lord. No, Lord. I can become the gatekeeper. Who asks you? Do the will of God. It is better to be number two in God's will than be number one in your own will. Yes, it's better. It's better to be number two in God's will. It's better to be number last in God's will than number one in your own will. I'm telling you. All said and done, God is going to reward you for doing his will. Yeah. He will reward you again for doing his own will. Oh. <laughs> ah, God, eh? Very interesting, God. You do what I ask you to do, I will give you reward again. <laughs> what a blessing. But you do what you want to do. You sponsor yourself, no will for you, nothing for you. And I will reject you again. Which one is smarter? To do the will of God. Look at what it says. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10. Don't get angry with me tonight. I'm coming back to that Ephesians 1 Amplified Classic. Look at what it says. Verse 7. Hebrews 10 verse 7. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I just want to play with this tonight and then we go into it. But then, it says, then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. You see that is scripture again. It's a script. To do thy will, O God. Why I have come is to do your will. Look at the next verse. Verse 8 to 9. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, that wouldest not. Neither has pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Verse 9. Look at it. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He are taking away the first, that he may establish the second. What am I trying to point your attention to? Your value for living is doing the will of God. Write that down. Your value for living is doing the will of God. Your value for living is doing the will of God. When you are not doing the will of God, you will be doing the will of men. You will do the will of somebody. If you are not doing the will of men, you will do the will of the devil. If you are not fulfilling the will of the devil, you will fulfill your own will. Which will self-destruct. That's why we must pray that prayer. Lord, reveal to me your will. Reveal to me your will in this matter. A car that can put, become your coffin. You should not be driving it. What do you think? A car. A job that will make you die by electrocution. You should not get that job. And that leads me to the conversation I want to introduce us to. That there is such a thing called the motions and the movements of the spirit. The motions and the movements of the spirit. Praise the Lord. The motions and the movements of the spirit. We have never met the spirit of God before. Until scripture opened him up in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. Let's start from verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the surface of the deep. Am I reading correctly? Yeah. Verse 2. 
verse 3 now and god said let there be light and there was light give me verse 2 again verse 2 again verse 2 and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep i've not finished verse 2 please and darkness was upon the face or the surface of the deep and the spirit of god moved someone say moved say they can say moved say they can say moved say they can say moved the first thing we saw about god was that he created the first thing we see about the spirit of god is that he moved i want you to watch it very well that the movement of the spirit of god is not only the first thing but the major thing of the spirit of god the movement someone say movement, movement. There is a word called stasis. It's synonym for stagnancy. Stasis means no development. When you look at your life and there's no movement, there's no spirit of God. If the spirit of God is there, no matter how deep, no matter how dark, there will be movement. Movement. <laughs> this month are you guys ready for this discussion you will move in jesus name Amen. but not only will you move this world will move for your sake in Amen. jesus name <laughs> are you ready for this month <laughs> glory to god <laughs> i'm sure somebody's asking where are we going to take this one to again though <laughs> where is this thing going to go <laughs> see listen the bible says the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters i want you to start tonight by understanding that where there is no movement there is no spirit where there is no movement you need to know where there is the spirit of god there must be movement there must be movement if your life is not moving there is no spirit it means it takes spirit to make progress and I'm coming to the conversation. I'm just trying to, I don't want to dive deep in tonight. Uh, are you there with me? It's deliberate. But I want you to see that God wants you to do his will by his spirit. I listed out my objectives of this teaching and the expected outcome from it. My desired outcome from this teaching is that people will start to see the movement of God's spirit for their daily lives from eating to drinking and they will understand that god dwells among men god is not in heaven god is here with us the first name god sent the angel to tell um joseph and mary was emmanuel what does it mean what does emmanuel mean not god in us god with us and that's what i want us to enter into that from tonight you will see the god with you causing movements in your life in the name of jesus christ and i hear better amen. amen so there's such a thing called the movement of the spirit of god there's also such a thing called the motions motions does not mean movements who can help me identify the difference any intelligent person tonight what is the difference between movement and motion eh? motion is the movement you already connected it to okay Eh? Okay. Okay. <laughs> what is the difference between a papa's chair? Okay. Okay. Vector quantity. Very good. You are getting there. The 
that's the same struggle he went through. That's right. That is it. I feel like, can we give you a round of applause, please? Motion is a change of state. Movement is directional. Very correct. It's exactly what I wanted to say. So there is motion. A broken chair of Baba. It's motion. It's not moving anywhere. It's making motion. You need to understand the difference. That's why these definitions are clear. Motion. Rocking chair. Baba chair. You are making move, you know, change of state. Doesn't mean you are making any progress. There is no velocity in the light of what you are saying. There is no velocity to the motion, to the change of state. I get what I'm saying here. Now, so we are using that word deliberately to introduce something in that there are some things that will happen to you. There will be motions. And you know, from that word motions, we get emotions. There are some things that you are going to see this month that will be motions in your spirit. You are going to have movements as well. And God is going to make things change their form and that your life will make some progress. Can I hear your amen, please? Amen. When somebody grows old, he has made some motion. When he gets wiser, he has made some movement. Fools grow old. Stupid grow old. They only change their state from age 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It's the same person. But movement means that you have dislocated yourself from the previous status and you have moved from a certain point A to a definite point B. Now, I don't intend to teach you science here, okay? But you need to learn something about science because life principles can be scientific. Why am I saying this to you? When a woman gets pregnant, praise God, what she feels inside is a combination of the two. Motions and then movements. Motions and then movements. Year one, year two, or be month one, month two. You know, day 30, day 40. They count it in days sometimes. But what I can see this month for you, and I say this prophetically, is that you will not only change states, you will change position. Amen. You not only change states, you will change position. Amen. Do you know that if you move from being a thousand year to being a millionaire, that is not motion, that is movement. Do you know you can change the look of your house? That is motion. But you change the address of your house, that is movement. <laughs> you understand? There's a difference. And I want to start to get conscious that the Spirit of God will start with motions and it will move you to movements. Both of them are important. Both of them. Change of state, change of position. And I want to welcome you tonight to a month where the Spirit of God is going to motion and move in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There are some of us here that what was disturbing you long before now will suddenly disappear. Amen. Amen. You will just not see it again. Amen. You know why? You have moved. You have moved. You have moved too far for you to even see it. <laughs> some of us, some of us, God is going to so change where you are Change your state that where you are standing, you will be a transformed person. Looking at the same problem, you will be laughing. I don't know if I'm speaking to the right people tonight. Or are they online? Receive the testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that whatever was difficult for you before now, the Spirit of the Lord will great grant to you an ease of experience. That you will find it easy to do the will of God. Now that you know who you are in Christ, I prophesy, go forward. 
I prophesy, move forward. Amen. I prophesy, advance. Amen. I prophesy, move forward. Amen. Change position. Amen. Change form. Amen. Improve on all sides. Amen. Transform over again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that poverty will never abide with you. Amen. I pray that whatever bedeviled your parents will not bedevil you. I pray that where your parents failed, you will not fail. I pray where others are falling, you will not fall. Can I speak over you properly tonight? I declare you will rise and shine. Can I say one more time? I say, rise and shine. I say one more time, rise and shine. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at me. You know that scripture says, arise, shine. You are not changing location no. where you are rise shine that is emotion that is not a movement rise where i'm still standing shine the way to shining is just a rising tonight god will cause you to arise i said tonight the holy ghost will cause you to arise look at ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 and we close with that ezekiel 2 2 this month we'll be taking ourselves on a journey of the motions and the movements of the spirit I want to show you something I think will benefit your everyday life and living see what it says <laughs> can we read it everybody want to go and the spirits entered somebody say entered into me when what when bishop was speaking to me are you seeing it in your bible what enters into you is not just an emotion it's the spirit but what happens and set me upon my feet ha -ha. <laughs> you can't remain seated when the spirit enters you <laughs> you can't i'm not the one that wrote it is there he said set me upon my feet that i heard him that speak unto me this same month you will hear god in the name of jesus christ he said the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet may the spirit of god set you upon your feet may he establish your path may he cause you to be granted favor he said he set me upon my feet he established me. He got me upstanding. You will be outstanding. Because you are upstanding, you will be outstanding. Because you are upstanding, you will be outstanding. So this is no ordinary month at all. Trust me. What you are going to be experiencing is the effective work of the Holy Ghost. And I'm very intentional about this because I want you to see how it's going to work so mightily. The effect of the Spirit has never been something to be looking for. You will see it. You will see it. When it came upon them, they started talking. Don't only think about the effect of the Spirit to be speaking in tongues. Are you guys ready for this one? You will see manifestations of the Spirit. You will predict events before they happen in your office. The word of knowledge that will be granted to you before your boss enters trouble, God will give it to you. Ha. You will deliver that office from losses. Are you ready this month? Are you ready this month? There will be manifestations, movements, and emotions of the Spirit of God. It will not be just a case of, uh, uh, no, 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 which is not bad in itself. But you will notice that in your brain, you are thinking faster than an average person. You are beginning to think sharper and faster. Answers at the speed of thoughts. Answers at the speed of thoughts. You will know what to say. You will know what to do. I said, you will know what to say. You will know what to do. Life will become easier for you this month. When you turn to the left, it will answer for you motions and movements of the spirit 
motions and movements this month money will not finish in your account Amen. why motions and movements motions and movements the holy ghost is going to take motions it's going to take movements i'll be breaking this down starting from sunday get the message notes get it ready it's going to be a blessing to me i personally have looking at it i'm excited and i just want us to go together into the next level this time you will start to understand that everything that happens around you is for a reason you start to understand that they refused you that job for a reason you start to understand that it was all part of the script and god will help you that you will come back and testify that where men laughed at you god has lifted up your head rise to your feet and give him thanks tonight he says the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet the lord is setting you upon your feet can i hear you believe in amen here wherever you are in this hall and even online lift up your hands and say holy spirit set me on my feet whatever that prayer means turn it to god in prayer and say father set me on my feet from tonight set me on my feet <laughs> set me on my feet set me on my feet set me on my feet almighty almighty set me on my feet almighty god set me on my feet set me on my feet as we worship and behold your face, the light of your container shines on us. As we ride each other, as we worship and behold your face, please let's take the coming on tonight. Of your container shines on us. As we ride each other, hallelujah. And we see your glory. 